<laughs> All right. the bar. All right, welcome, welcome, everybody. Another episode of the Friday Night Pro League coming up. We got Mike Nardone on the right, John Lascarbo on the left. This is Academy 3 versus Lafayette. Home team is in the Salmon. Away team is in red. Mike Nardone starting with a strike. Yeah, what's happening, Mike? John Lascarbo with a 1-8 and that's it. Oh no. Oh, that's, that is not a good start from Lascarbo. Crushing the head bin, just getting a 1-8 there. Never good. Never good. Uh, it's the second strike in a row for Mike Nardone on that lane. He threw one in warm-ups. Ah, nice out there for Lascarbo. Rachel, what's going on? Good to see you. Always good to see Rachel. All right, Mike Nardone on the right. Already one strike. Double strike. Are you? There it is. There it is. Double strike to start it. Huge. Ah, that's why this is the Pro League, guys. <laughs> So this is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts, David. That's a real good start right there. Oh, what a shot from the Starbo. Mark's all over the place right now. And we got Mike Salona, one of my favorite bowlers out there. He's a super awesome guy. And we got Matt Lawless on the left. Decent start, you know. I've always said I want to record the first perfect game, so, you know, this is <laughs> 11 more, or 10 more, and I'll be impressed, okay? Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a nice start for Mike Salone. <laughs> right? That is definitely Pandolin bowling right there, Rich. Both threw a really good ball, and Lascarbo just... Did not have any luck there. But he is sharing the live, which is always nice. It's really not a lot of arm pain, believe it or not. Like, oh, you're talking uh, Mike Salona, probably. But yeah, he definitely has an interesting throw, that is for sure. I don't understand some people's throws. Yeah, yeah. That's Mike Salona. He's an accurate bowler. I don't know. It's just a very odd throw, for sure. What's going on, Eric? Wow. Okay. And back to back spares for Mike Salona. Four marks in a row for Academy 3. They could be going for a record right now for uh, biggest score during the Pro League. Let's go. I get it. Yeah, a lot of people prefer 10 bit Ghost Smith. I get it. Um, but Candlepin is what I grew up on, and this is the normal bowling for me. Uh, rules are almost the same as 10-pin bowling, if that's what you mean by regular bowling. Uh, we do get three throws instead of just two. Uh, we do leave the fallen pins up there to make our spares and our tens. And that third throw is only a ten if you get them all down, not a spare. Rachel, subscribe! Rachel! Being a subscriber always helps me so, so much. Uh, always very thankful. Any single time uh, I get a new subscriber, it, it's the best way to support me as a content creator. So I appreciate it. And that is JT. JT Lyonnais up on the left. Steve Poulin up on the right. Yeah, this is normal bowling around here for sure. I appreciate it a lot. Colin, what's going on, buddy? Incredible 10 there for JT. Colin taking the number one gifter badge with a heart lead. Yep, uh, JT is on the, uh, the Lafayette team. Oh, great ball. Uh, so this is River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. My hometown and the greatest 
Colin subscribed to Colin. You're the best, buddy. Two subscribers already in the first. There is no score screen here, believe it or not, Eric. Uh, this is a very old lens. They're from the 1930s. And uh, there were no screens back then. Um, oh my god, Colin's in a bunch of GGs now. Thank you, thank you, buddy. Yeah, it is still pencil and paper here. Uh, so, slow in candlepin doesn't mean more accurate. That is, that is not a thing. Like, I know in 10 pin it is because the ball is so big. Um, so, it's not a thing. Like, I know in 10 pin it is because the ball is so big. Um, so, slower actually works. Slower doesn't really help that much in candlepin. Speed is a, it's a big help. Man, boy, another subscriber in. Yeah, this is still pencil and paper. I'll show you the scores at the end of every game if I can. Pre release is next week, buddy. Pre release is next Friday. It's close. You're close to it, but yeah, it's next week. Uh, Scott Lapierre. Oh, uh, just missing. Yeah, it is. A 122 average in this game is really good. It's better than some of these guys that are up there right now. Yeah, but you know, you, you do get a lot of uh, help if the uh, ball is thrown quicker. What's going on, Dakota? Good to see you. Nope, it's the 8th, because then um, the one I'm running is going to be on the 12th, or the 13th, at uh, uh, Outrider Road Company. Kim, what's going on? Good to see you, Kim. Oh my god, you guys are coming in strong today. Two new subscribers, multiple gifters already. Oh, you guys are the best. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Rachel. Thank you. No, you don't have any candle pin. It's candle pin, not candle stick. Uh, there's no candle pin bowling in Texas at all. I'm sorry. Yeah, with an Apple Orchard too. Josh, good seeing you. No, it, it's funny, like, just doing these lives, I see how many people have never heard of Candleton before. And uh, it's just normal bowling for me, so this is what I always, what I always see. Nick, another subscriber. What's going on, buddy? Good to see Nick. Bold. He bowled on my team. Petey, you gotta press the button. Yeah, there's a few candle pin bowling TikTokers now, but I'm definitely one of the best out there, I think. Oh, PDP, half wizard to the right. Sean Landry with a beautiful first ball. It's not expanding anytime soon. My goal is to get somebody rich to really start enjoying this game, and then they can start expanding it. But... <laughs> I love it, Patty, I do. Oh, this is definitely bowling, SMF, but it might not be the normal bowling you're used to. This is called Candleman Bowling, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. Very regional form of it, found pretty much only in northern New England. Instead of Saturday mornings, now you get uh, Friday night with me instead of uh, all the uh, Mike Morin and all them, you know? PDP crushing the head bin there, just getting two out of it. Yeah, you get a lot of uh, duck pin down in uh, the mid Atlantic region. I, I have no money, Richie Rich. That's some, for someone with a name like Richie Rich, that's up to you. You got the money, you got the cash. <laughs> uh, everyone's got to move their balls over. Uh, the ball returns are on the outside here, so they have to actually take their balls and switch them to the other side. This is a very old lane before uh, the ball returns were in the middle. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, so this is a very small house. There's eight lanes here. 
very cozy place right now. And this is a travel league, so you have uh, Academy coming to Lafayette. It is still 10 pins, but three throws. Oh, nice try, nice try. I mean, have you tried bowling at all? You never have to be really in shape to be a, a good bowler. Uh, this is not in Canada. This is in the United States. This is River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Very intimate, yep. They definitely are, I'm sorry. Sorry to let you know, buddy. Garbo with a great first ball. Yeah, they've done, they've done a lot of updates here, but they want to keep that vintage feel like it was back in the day when it first opened. Uh, so there's no automatic scoring. There's no electronic scoring. Everything's still pencil and paper here. Yes, I am coming to lead up for Worlds at least just Tuesday. I don't know about Wednesday and definitely probably not the rest of the time up there. I pull out of here on Sunday mornings when I do the King of the River tournament. Uh, my other alley is uh, Academy Lanes, so that's when I pull out more often. Um, I average about a 104 right now. Why is it different than, what, 10 pin? Because um, it's a different sport. Like, it's similar to 10 pin, but it's a little bit different. I don't pull 10 pin as well, no. Um, once in a while, for fun, for something different to do, I'll bowl 10 pin. But for the most part, I bowl uh, just pretty much candle pin only. Matt Lawless on the right, missing the head pin there. Like Salona with two spares to start, but can't get it on the third one. There it is. Nice 10 for Matt Lawless. Good 10 for Mike Solano, too. Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of really good ones from the 80s. If you want to watch my stuff, you can watch mine from, you know, more recently. Uh, but then you have to listen to me instead of, like, good announcers. The guys from the 80s were so good, so professional. Yeah, I like going 10 pin once in a while, but this is just, for me at least, like the best kind of bowling there is. I think it's more fun. It's definitely a faster pace than 10 pin. And uh, there's a lot more different spares in this game than there is in 10 pin. You like me, Andrew? I appreciate that. Lights off over the alley. Oh, I don't know if I would like that. I don't know if I would like that. Yeah, it's a much, much faster pace. Every time I watch a 10 pin bowler on there, on here, uh, this app, like, it just always feels so slow. And then they go up there, they throw one strike, and then they sit down. It's just like, I don't know. It's, I like the faster pace stuff. Will I bowl Sunday? Uh, during the King of the River? Maybe. I don't see why not. I should. Yeah, I always refer to 10 pin as big ball bowling also. Oh my god, Wakefield, that is the hardest bowling alley in the world. Wakefield makes this place look fast. And this is definitely one of the uh, one of the harder places. It is not a normal bowling ball, you are correct. That is a Candleton bowling ball. Oh, good ball there from Pula. Uh, yeah, I bowled at Sunnyside. I've never bowled in Sudbury. Spares are tough, strikes are tough. It's a, it's a much harder game because the ball is so small. Uh, so the men's championship is next week 
uh, Tuesday through Friday uh, at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Andrew. Okay, yep, yep. The only Ryan's place I've done is, uh, I've been, I've pulled out of once. This is in America, yep. We are in Amesbury, Massachusetts right now. I will be live at least on Tuesday for the, the Men's World Championship. Uh, we'll see about the rest of the week. It is not the same as duck pin. Well, duck pin pins look more like 10 pins, but shorter. And these ones are taller than 10 pins and skinnier. Saturday, I have uh, no plans to bowl on Saturday this week. Right now, at least. <laughs> Go to Ken Steakhouse, okay. No one has ever bowled a perfect game in this. 245 is the most that has ever happened. Everyone's first time when they do Candlepin, even if you're a great PBA bowler, you, you won't break 100 most likely. <laughs> How tall am I? That's a weird question. That is a weird question. Yeah, still no one's ever bowled a perfect game. 245 is the most. Nothing in Oklahoma, I'm sorry. No, Canada bowling is a very regional sport, and it's pretty much only found here in northern New England and Atlantic Canada. It's actually been around a little bit longer than uh, 10 pin, believe it or not. Not shorter lanes, no, same length, 60 feet long. Yeah. Sure you did, Colin. We bowled against each other. I know that's not true. <laughs> uh, there's still 10 pins, and uh, the ball can weigh up to 2 pounds, 7 ounces. This is a very slick floor, uh, but for the most part, you want to slide because of the momentum, because you want to get a lot of speed on your ball, uh, so you're going to slide a lot. You can buy your equipment on uh, at any of the bowling alleys that you go to. You can go to uh, the different websites, Paramount website or wherever. Yeah, the lanes don't like it when you put uh, powder on your feet, but it definitely makes it slicker up there. Well, I, I'm not a bowling tonight user, so my, what I can bench press is not is not important. Uh, my bowling balls are out in my car right now, so I I can't show you mine. Yeah, I'm not bowling tonight. I'm just watching the recording tonight. No, no screens to keep the score. This is actually a very old school lane. It's vintage. And it's still pencil and paper here. You want to see a bowling ball? Okay, give me a second and I will uh, grab one for you. What's going on? Wow. Well, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, let me grab one of these balls. From one of the lanes. Oh, this is just one of the lane balls that I'm going to grab. Excuse me for a second. And then once there's a break in the action, I will uh, show you a bowling ball. Yeah, it doesn't surprise you if you've never seen a bowling like this. It's pretty much only found here in northern New England. So if you've never been up this way, uh, you guys ready for the bowling ball? There it is. Right there. That's it in my hand. This is a lane ball, so you see there's a lot of cracks and divots in it, but. That's what a bowling ball looks like. No finger holes, no nothing. Yeah, you get three throws per turn. It is very difficult to throw a strike. Um, most pro bowlers will only throw about one strike per game. It is much more, um, much more of a spare game or even a 10 game. It's bigger than a ski ball and a lot heavier than a ski ball. Ski balls are made of wood, so they're really, really light. Um, so these are like two pounds, seven ounces. If you've ever played bocce, it is very similar to a bocce ball. Uh, do women play? Yes, yes they do. Um, not during the, this is the Friday Night Men's uh, pro, uh, pro League. 
So you won't see any women bowling in this, but there's a lot of great women bowlers out there. No, no one has ever thrown a 300. <laughs> I've thrown many, oh not many, but a good amount of three strikes. Uh, that fourth one I've only gotten one time, so. Yep, the pins stay on the lanes uh, to make your spares and your tens. Most of the time it helps, but not all the time. If you want to find lanes that do, do this, Chris, you have to come to Northern New England. So you have to come to Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine, or go to, up to Atlantic Canada. Outside of this area, there's almost none. Wow, they are still falling for John Lascarbo. I think he's got someone out back, not the pins down there. Right, well, that's the thing, you know, but so many people don't, uh, have never heard of this before. A decent average is 100. If you can average 100 in most leagues, you'll be uh, one of the better bowlers in your league. If you can average a 115 to a 120, you'll probably be bowling in a league like this. And if you can average a 130, 140, uh, you'll be literally the best in the game. I will be at Worlds at least one day, at least Tuesday. Um, I'm not sure about the rest of the week, but we'll see. Jill, with a heart me, thank you, thank you. Uh, so you don't want to put a spin on your, well, not that you don't want to spin on your ball, but you, it's not as important as it is in 10 minutes. Oh, that sounds good. I can't wait for goodies. <laughs> did you make me, or did you let me have one of them um, at the Mixed Worlds too? Is that you? Oh, yes. Can't wait then. <laughs> Jill with all sorts of gifts coming in. Thank you, thank you. They are. They are throwing it very, very hard. Uh, your average candlepin bowler throws it about 35 miles an hour for men. About 25 to 30 for women. This is called candlepin bowling, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. Uh, spares. This is more of a spare game than uh, ten pin. Twisted sexy cakes and a bunch of gifts along with chill. I think they're having a battle to become the number one right now. <laughs> so the reason you want to throw it hard, even with one uh, with one pin up there, it's because you don't want uh, your arm to be in a different pattern. Like when you throw the ball, you want to throw it the same way every time. It's all about consistency. It is a dry lane. There is a protective coating on it, but it's not for uh, spinning or anything like that. No, if a, if a piece of wood is in the gutter, you cannot use it. Uh, you can use the de the wood on the lanes, that is live wood. Any wood in the gutter is dead wood. What a shot from JT. You know, this has actually been around longer, Grant, than 10 pin bowling. This has been around since the 1880s, but it never really uh, left the New England area. Yeah, there's a lot of great candlepin shows back in the day. Uh, that could be, he could be uh, out of uh, uh, Polarama. I'm not 100% sure about that. So the pro bowlers average, supposedly, according to Paul Grant, uh, about one strike per game, pro bowlers. If you are not a pro bowler, you might get one strike every five games. Man, man, what's happening, buddy? It is the best kind of ball, I agree. Uh, three throws per uh, frame, yep. Uh, first ball still a strike, second ball still a spare. Third ball is just total pin ball. Yeah, so many places have closed down over the years. It's very sad, but that's happening with all bowling, not just Campbell. 
Uh, 10 frames, same as uh, 10 pins. If you throw 12 strikes, it is still 300, even though that has never happened in the history of the game. The game has been around for 145 years. No one's ever thrown a perfect game. Yeah, so if you get them all down your third ball, it is just a 10. That's it. Uh, there's no bonus balls. If you get them all down your second one, that is a spare. And you do obviously get the one bonus ball out of your next turn. Michelle, how are you? Hello, hello. Good seeing you, Michelle. Yes. Uh, pins knocked over are still in play, as long as they're not in the gutter. Well, 12 strikes. You want 12 strikes in a row to get that 300. Close some. Close someone's ever gotten me twice it's happened. 245 has happened twice. Um, max ball size is two pounds, seven ounces. Four and a half inches wide. Oh, look at that. Come on. I, I want to be around. Like, I've never recorded a 200 game yet. I've recorded a lot of games. And in my entire life, I've only seen one 200. What a shot from LaPierre. Uh, there's 10 pins down there. Same configuration as 10 pins. Nice, yep. Wamasan well, Lanes is uh, very nice lanes. Kind of expensive to go there, but... That's my only uh, trouble with that place was it was so expensive when I went there. I think the water was like five dollars or something ridiculous. It's not. The arms almost never hurt in this game. It's the knees that really take the biggest uh, punishment. Because you see how hard they slide on their uh, leg. Like all that pressure is stopping on your knee. Yeah, tap the live. Get more likes up here. We're only at 8,000. We gotta do better than that. Uh, the lanes are 60 feet long, same exact as 10. In fact, when we get new synthetic lanes, generally, or not generally, but some people will get just 10 pin lanes. I don't think they're ever bold and active, no. So I'm really new to the traveling part of this game. Um, I definitely bowled for many, many years, but I never really left uh, what was Leo's in Amesbury growing up. Uh, it wasn't until like 2019 that I started doing more tournaments out and about. Thank you guys for the follows. I appreciate that. I'm trying to get to 20,000 followers. Whoa. Uh, before my birthday in 13 days from today. So I need like 300 more followers by then. I'm close. I want to get that 20,000 is such a big number. And uh, I think it would be super cool. So. so every person who's following me today, I really, really appreciate it. Yes, a fellow November 14th, baby. Um, I believe it's got to be one of the more common birthdays because it's nine months to the day after Valentine's Day. So, I mean, you know the kind of gifts my, uh, my mother was giving. <laughs> Alright, yeah, sometimes just closing the app, Jill, will help. They do get three throws, Bearded Booty. Yep, first ball is still a strike, second ball is still a spare, third ball is just total big ball. There is one of these alleys in New York State. It is at um, Apex Gaming in Albany, New York. So if you're up in Albany, you can go try it. I actually, in my uh, my high school class, there were three of us that all had the same birthday. <laughs> yep. Thank you for the rose, Christina. I appreciate it. And the follow, too. You're the best. This is definitely harder than 10 pin bowling. Yeah. So the guys you're watching tonight are the pro bowlers. And uh, you'll see them still miss shots. 
<laughs> that is uh, John Lascarbo. The entire Lafayette team is in salmon colored shirts. You know, if someone likes 10 pin bowling, that's all all the power to them, AAA. Three throws per frame, yep. Yeah, if you grew up in this area, you this is the standard bowling around here. This is the normal style of bowling. Big ball bowling, which is 10 pin, is the odd one right here. This is called candle pin bowling, Sparky, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. It's candle pin, not candle stick, but yep. Uh, still 10 pins. Yes, it is. Same configuration as 10 pin. Same distance apart. They're all still 12 inches apart down there. I know it doesn't look like it, but they are a foot apart. Matt Lawless with a great first ball there. Uh, this place was built in the 1930s, and... Uh, it has taken a lot of wear and tear over the years. Yes, this is Massachusetts. This is uh, Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Uh, only in New England will you find candle pin bowling in this area. Uh, it's definitely not big. This is a real game, believe it or not, Big Orange. This is real bowling right here. This is not a video game, if that's what you're thinking. Uh, this is River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Right above the legendary hard knocks. Absolutely. Yep. Where uh, John Cena uh, works out. So if you're over here, you might be able to see... You might be able to see John. He did grow up in this area, and he... Uh, Bulk up downstairs from here. Uh, there is no scoreboard, me. believe it or not. Um, this this is a very old school place, so it is still pencil and paper. Christina sharing the live with more than ten friends. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, nobody is actually good at this game either. Just so you know, like even the pro bowlers here aren't great at this game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so that's a good thing about candle pinball. You can always get better. Uh, how hard do they throw it? Uh, most uh, candle pinballers who are men throw it about 35 miles an hour. Some have, I've seen throw it upwards of 50. Yeah, absolutely. It's a much faster game than uh, Intention. Um, yeah, give me a second. Pete, can I borrow the score for a second? Can I see the score for a second? Just for a second. Here you go, guys. This is what it looks like. So that's like. <laughs> yeah, 32 is a pretty good ball. Uh, how often is there a strike? Uh, most pro bowlers throw on average about one strike per game. No oil on the legs. Nope. Are you allowed to drink? Of course. This is bowling, you know? <laughs> I don't know any bowling alley that wouldn't, you wouldn't, that wouldn't be allowed. In fact, right behind me, there is uh, the Lafayette Club. So if you want the cheapest drinks around, this is the place to come to. Uh, you would think being around for 145 years-ish that we would have thrown a perfect game by now, but not yet. Oh, Ron's, I've been to Ron's. My son left a bowling ball there one time. <laughs> Uh, so no, you generally don't want to throw a hook ball. Generally a hard straight ball is your best option. Pretty much all straight throwing, yes. Very regional. Very regional sport, pretty much only found here in northern New England, in Atlanta, Canada. Most strikes in a game, we talked about this before, I think it's seven or eight. Seven. Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. You can probably do for more than 30 seconds if they say something like that. I don't know. It <laughs> could be. This isn't, this isn't in Nashua, but I will be there next week. Oh, it's so much harder. Candlepin is much harder than Tenpin. Uh, you're talking pro bowlers only have, averaging about a 115 to a 120. Well, you got to remember, so the ball is smaller than the hole between the pins. If you threw a big hook and missed the head pin, you could go in between the pins and miss every single pin up there. This is not Lita Lanes. Nope, this is Riverwalk Lanes in Kingsbury, Massachusetts. I will be at Lita Lanes next week, if that was the question. Now, duck pin is different. Duck pin looks more like uh, 10 pins, but shorter. And uh, the ball is bigger in duck pin. I don't know what SATX is, but San Antonio, Texas? Because there's no candle pin in Texas. I don't think there ever has been. Uh, Sean Landry up on the right. Petey Pete Crawford on the left. Uh, so, Fripp, we are at Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Now, Candipin Bowling is the best kind of bowling, Punky. you got to give it a try sometime. Uh, I went to one place in Fitchburg, but I don't think it was called The Hub. What was the one? It's like upstairs in a place. I don't, I don't remember. It was down the street from Mason's, kind of. Yes, yes it is. So the ball is uh, four and a half inches wide, and the distance between the one and the three pin is 12 inches. It is a foot from center to center, so it's probably, honestly, more like 11 inches, but it's a big, big hole in between the two. Uh, so Scott, honestly, you want to throw a faster ball when you're throwing Candlepin. Uh, you get more pin action that way. Uh, so with a 10 pin, you're, all your uh, the force in the stuff that make the pins bounce around comes from the weight of the ball being significantly more than the pins. Our ball is actually weighs less than the pins themselves. So you got to put speed on them if you want to really knock them down. Putnam Lanes, that's where I, I go there. Yeah, Mason's closed, that's very, real sorry. Uh, we, don't, we don't condone Doc Like Daddy. Either. I know it's a joke, but you know, abuse is not anything we want to talk about on here. Uh, so this is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. No, it's one foot diagonal. So I don't, uh, I don't know exactly if you were to go forward and back what the difference is, but diagonal, it's 12 inches. There's a few that offer uh, 10 pin and candle pin, not candlestick, candle pin. Um, there's another place in Amesbury called Game Time Lanes and Entertainment, and they have both of them. But they're 10 pin ones. <laughs> Doesn't anybody have any respect for the 10 pin ones? <laughs> Doesn't anybody have any respect for the game? Um, but their 10 pins are on strings, which is just weird. Uh, the layout looks exactly the same as 10 pin. It's, you know, the one, two, three, four. That setup. <laughs> Ball weights also vary. So, sort of, the ball weights can vary. Um, not by much, though. Uh, so, the balls can weigh anywhere from 2 pounds, 4 ounces to 2 pounds, 7 ounces. Uh, most people who have their own will use either 2 sixes or 2 sevens. That is a 
quick way to get blocked, Jake. There you go. Uh, three throws per frame. No, no, that, that's not a mute. That is a full block every time, Jeff. I don't mind people, you know, talking about 10 pin being better or anything like that. That's no problem. But you start using words like that, we just get rid of them. Ah, uh, that's okay. I was... Melissa? Um, yeah, it's too bad the ACST wouldn't take you in, but I told you that's why you didn't want to be too friendly with me. <laughs> uh, the pins in diameter, I think they're two inches in diameter. No oil on the lanes. Nope, this is... Uh, well, okay. So many comments coming through all of this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I try to keep it as clean as we can. I, I really do. Craziest candle pin story I have? Uh, okay, well, one time I was at... <laughs> in Exeter, and um, I threw my ball and it went onto the ball return, and then I shot into the back room and broke one of the lights in the back. Never seen this type of bowling. It's not awkward. It's just different than 10-pin bowling. Yeah, you're not going to find this in the south at all. This is pretty much only here in uh, northern New York. Uh, you blocked a few people, Jeff, I saw. I'm not playing tonight, Efren, no. Uh, this is the pro bowlers. And I'm a good bowler, but I'm not quite on this level still. These are vintage lanes. Lisa, get some more hand hearts. Oh, uh, you can't throw because there's nothing up there right now. I mean, you've blocked Steven like a hundred times so far, Jeff. <laughs> uh, I've seen a pin flip over one time. I, I didn't do it, but I saw it was on the lane next to us. I love it, Smiley. I, I love when people get to tell me about their first time Candleton bowling. It's a lot of fun. You could put a curve on the ball, but generally you want to throw a hard, fast, straight ball. Where is this Quentin? So this is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Uh, Mark will not be getting electronic scoring here anytime soon. Yeah, nothing in Pennsylvania at all, I'm sorry. Amesbury, yes. <laughs> My hometown, it's where I grew up. Love this place. Greatest little city in the entire state of Massachusetts. Uh, well, you can go through my lives. Ooh, what's up? Well, start doing better. Mine is on Worlds. You know you got to bowl this before Worlds, right? Uh, so, yeah, go through my, uh, my videos. Uh-oh. We're moving. Uh oh, we gotta move. All right, we gotta go to three and four. Give me a second. I'll show you the whole place while I'm uh, moving the camera. That lane is totally busted right now. So if you want to see the whole alley while we're moving around, uh, so that's all the different styles of pins over there. You got some duck pins, 10 pins. There's a Boston pin over there. Uh, there's Bill Pullen. That's the entrance. And here is the uh, the front desk. There's the records, the score, with the cost. What's up? Hi. Uh, there's the jukebox. My grandmother's name is over there. What does the single game cost? Let's go back over here. Close your eyes if you're moving this. Here you go. Here's the school. Welcome to River Rock Lanes. Two fifty for shoes. Four fifty for bowling. Specials for fourteen dollars for three. All right. Let me get back over here. Get the camera angles just right. Normally I get to do all this ahead of time. Yes, if you threw a 10-pin ball, you could break the machine in the back. The machine in the back is not set up for 
Um, can't open it at all. Or for a 10 pin ball. Sorry, you're trying to move everything all at once. Yes, you would actually break the machine, so don't throw a 10 pin ball. Grab my uh, lemonade over here. Don't want to leave that behind. Yeah, it's definitely an affordable sport. It also, River Rock Lanes is one of the cheaper bowling alleys out there also. Yep, so the pins stay up there to make your spares and your tens. Um, most of the time they help, but not always. A lot of the times they can just be a complete roadblock. And becoming a uh, pro bowler, you really have to learn how to use those things to the, the fallen pins to make those spares in your tens. What a shot. Oh, Get a second person to reference uh, the zombies here. Why are you blocking him, Mr. Boo? What, Jeff, why'd you block him? Did he say something else? I have never met Ralph Sim before, but yeah, I think he's referencing the uh, the Call of Duty stuff that this place looks like. So this is River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. shot from JT. Good spare there. Strikes are very tough to get. These are pro bowlers and you still like see them hit the pocket perfectly like he did there on the right and they just don't go. This is definitely more of a spare game or even like a 10 game than anything else. Yes, well it's not Deadwood, it's Livewood at that point. It is not Canada. Nope, this is the United States of America. This is River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Yeah, duck pin is similar, I guess. Uh, but it's a completely different sport also. Yeah, dead wood is the wood that's in the gutters and the stuff you can't use. Live wood is the ones that you can use. Third is not a spare. No, third, if you get them all down, it's just a tank. It is just total thin ball and that's it. Nothing extra. Uh, I don't know enough about duck pin bowling to tell you anything about duck pin. I've only duck pin bowled, I think, twice in my entire life. So I am not the, the foremost expert on duck pin. You gotta come try it then, Boomstick. Speed is a big factor in this game, yes. I know in 10 pin revolutions are a big factor, it is not that case here. Here you wanna throw a good hard fastball. Exclusively candle pin bowling, yep. Most places in this area are exclusively, uh, exclusively candle pin. You get three throws. First ball still a strike, second ball still a spare. Third ball is just total pin ball. Yes, stuck pin is three throws also, uh, shorter 10 pin style pins. And you have to clear all the wood, which we get to use the wood to make our spares in our tents. Uh, duck pin, you're not allowed to. Uh, would not count. So if you see, John, there is a line right there. That is called the lob line. Your ball is to make contact with the line prior to that. Or else it is a foul ball, same as if it went in the gutter. And it, being a two and a half pound ball, it is very hard to throw like a baseball. 
Hi, someone supporting Kendallton Bowling. Al is a 245. It's happened twice. What is the purpose of this slide? So that way you can uh, get more speed on your ball. How many establishments like this in the US? Uh, there's a lot in this area, but it is a very regional sport and pretty much only found here in Northern New England. So outside of this area, all the test slide. Um, it's just to make sure you don't have your, uh, your little booty on or uh, to make sure there's nothing on the lanes. There's no candle in uh, Florida. I'm sorry. Adam Sandler is not here right now. He might be uh, next week. But... Nice. Where do you bowl out of snow, girl? Trying to think if I've been to one in northern New Hampshire. I've been to Concord, but I don't even know if that's technically northern New Hampshire. Much faster pace than Tempin. Absolutely is. Much, much faster pace. Spares are always on two. And your third ball you would take out of your next frame. Just like in Tempin. It's scored probably the, almost the exact same way as 10 pin, with the only difference being your third ball, which is just total pin ball, and that's it. So if you get them all down your third ball, it's just a 10, nothing else. Not a lot of strikes here, Olivia. Nope. Uh, there's no oil on the lanes, Cody. It is a straight dry lane. Yeah, that is way north. I, I have never bowled there. Well, you're going to have to come out here, Jill, sometime. I'll show you all the cool places. We'll go out together. It'll be a good time. Ten pin is the most common. Uh, no, you should not be painting your balls, no. But you can uh, get custom made balls for different colors and everything. But you don't want paint on your ball, that, that would be bad. Okay, Alex, you're gonna have to come up here to Northern New England then and give it a try. If you ever come out here, like there's plenty of other stuff to do besides bowling, obviously. Um, so come out here for the leaves or come out here for the beautiful spring, check out the history of Boston. And then while you're here, you know, go do some bowling while you're up here. So generally, you want to throw a hard straight ball. Uh, there's no oil in the lane, so really hooking the ball, that isn't the, it just doesn't work. And there's so much space in between the pins, I know it doesn't look like it, but your ball could literally go in between them all if you hooked it and uh, it went in between the pins. It's less effective. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. Familiar name. Like, it's just less effective. Uh, same as in, what a strike there from Mike Nardone. Uh, still a, uh, you know, 710 is still the hardest one to pick up. It helps when there's a piece of wood there. There's a strike for you guys. I am trying to get to that 20,000 followers in the next two weeks. So if you guys don't give me a follow yet, I would appreciate it. Um, my birthday's coming up in two weeks, and it'd be super awesome to hit that 20,000 before then. Kind of like a small goal of mine. Um, I appreciate it. Yep. It's significantly harder than 10 pro bowling, yes. This is a scratch league. You're talking pro bowlers here. Um, 
only have like a 150 or 120 average. And it, obviously 10 pin, you would have like pro bowlers with about a 240 average. Staff, what's going on? I mean, Sean Landry still throws a fastball. So if he was throwing a fastball when he was younger, I don't know what to say. Uh, the ball is made out of either urethane or rubber. Same as in like 10 pin. Um, generally, like yes, urethane, my uh, Cobras that I use are, uh, are pro rubber. So you get uh, 10 frames per game and there's a three game match today. <laughs> uh, 2.7, yep, two pounds, seven ounces is the maximum weight, not 2.7, but yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's definitely easier to pick up. Yeah, I would agree with that. There are different weights to the ball, but not by a whole lot. So the, the lowest you could get is two pounds, four ounces, all the way up to two pounds, seven ounces. Uh, but really the two fours and the two fives are like the, uh, the glow bowling balls, which are just made of a different material. Oh, okay, okay, yep. Yeah. Sean, do you know David Milner? David Milner? Yep. He says you're looking old, just so you know. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> says you used to throw it harder. I said I don't know if I, I don't know if I believe that. I used to what? <laughs> throw it harder. Oh, man. oh yeah. Like I don't know. He throws it pretty hard already. <laughs> uh, he was laughing at you. Yep. Uh, how many candle pin bowlers are actual bowlers? Are 10 pin bowlers also? Uh, not too many. Just because if you go back between the two different ones, like it messes with your arm swing really bad. Uh, so you'll see a lot of uh, candle pin bowlers do it for fun once in a while, but that's about it. There's a few people who uh, will do a league of both, but as a general rule, you do one or the other. This is the Friday Night Pro Men's League. Oh, nice try from JT. Nice try. Yeah. <laughs> There's a good spare. Chris Kaz up on the right, Scott LaPierre on the left. Thank you guys for sharing the live. I appreciate it. 55 shares so far. You guys are incredible tonight. Really appreciate when you guys do stuff like that. The more people that get to see this game, the better. Chris Kaz. Not a nice hard ball, but missing the head pin. Likes are pouring in right now, too. I don't know who's doing that, but I appreciate it. Oh, Chris Kaz, that pin's spinning. It wants to hit the head pin. There it is. That's the shot he was looking for. That would have taken it before. Uh, Scott Lafayette missing. This is called Candleman Bowling, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. A very regional sport found pretty much only here in northern New England and Atlantic Canada. But it is definitely the best kind of bowling ever. Yeah, Chris Kaz off the head pin again. You gotta find that head pin. Any tips for a beginner? Sure. Uh, keep your chest forward, keep your toe facing forward. Um, bowl with better bowlers than you. Uh, they'll generally be able to help you. 
generally chest forward, arms straight, toes forward. Very basic stuff like that. Speed does play a very big part of this game. Yep. So unlike the revolu you know, the revolutions or the revs that a normal 10 pin bowler would talk about, we more talk about the speed of our ball and how fast you can throw the ball. Not that speed is everything, but accuracy is still the most important thing. Great ball from Sean Landry right there. PDP. Well, this is the United States also, Corey. This is River Rock Lane in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Well, Mass is part of, in the northern New England I'm talking about, mostly because it's not in Connecticut or Rhode Island. So, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont are the four states where you see this the most. This is one of the harder bowling alleys out there. Uh, it's generally known that the pins don't really fall well here. Yes, I always say bowl with better bowlers than you. No, you're not. No, you're not. There's a strike from Sean Landry. Let's go. They are 60 foot lanes. Yes, yes, they are. It is, it is a lot of fun. It's such a faster paced game than 10 pin. And I know it's not for everybody, but I think it's the best. <laughs> okay. Well, if you've heard New England and thought of regular England, like there is a big difference between the two. Uh, hold on, I got a puzzle piece. Puzzle piece finished. Uh, yeah, I bowled at Lido Lanes. Yeah, and I'll be up there actually next week. I'll be up there on Tuesday to record the Men's World Championships. It scores almost the same as 10 pin bowling. Uh, your first ball is still a strike. If you can throw 12 of them, it is still 300. Uh, spare your second ball if you get them all down. Your third ball is the only difference in scoring, and that is if you knock them all down your third ball, it is just a 10, and that's it. Okay, Eric, thank you. That's why, oh, okay. Wish I had known that before. <laughs> You may not like it, but this is the body of a pro athlete, okay? Oh, well, close to do a double. No one's ever bowled a 300. Nope. The most that's ever happened is 245, and it's happened twice. What a shooter. What a shooter. I always say join a league, just for fun. Like, you don't have to be good anymore. Like, it is what, just bowl, have fun. That's what it's all about. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Chad. I wish I could help you out, but you do get three shots like in duck pin. Yep, scoring is the exact same as duck pin. That would be a very impressive Candleman average of 134. So are you bowling in the World's Tournament next week, then, Justin? Wow, that's a good average, Joe. Uh, so this is called Candleman Bowling, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. There's no oil on the lanes. No, these are dry lanes. There's no oil on a Candleman lane. You don't need it to protect the lanes like you do in 10 pin. Like the reason that the oil is there is to protect the lanes. And then they adapted it to uh, make the game better. Yes, yeah, so you get three throws per frame. First ball is still a strike, second ball is still a spare. Third ball is just total pin ball. That is just the two pin right there. That is a quarter lister. I've never even heard of beacon lanes.
It is like 10 pin bowling, Wes, if that's what you're asking. It's similar. Like, there's obviously some differences between the two sports, but it, it's just bowling still. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of uh, bowlers only bowl during the winter because uh, they play softball during the spring and summer. Yes, strikes are relatively rare, especially compared to 10 pin. Uh, 10 pin, you're expected to throw a strike almost every time. And in Canada, and pro bowlers even only throw a strike about once per game. Uh, so it's three frames per, uh, or no, two frames before they switch. Two. How heavy is the ball? The ball weighs two pounds, seven ounces at the most. Can weigh as little as two pounds, four ounces. But gen generally you want to use the heavier balls if you have your own. Oh, nice first ball there, eight pin drop. JT missing the head pin there. No, you generally don't want to throw a curveball. It is less effective than just throwing a hard straight ball. Yes, we had to switch lanes. Uh, lane six broke down. So much so that the uh, the lady working here wasn't able to fix it right away. No oil on the lanes, Hayden. No, nope, just dry lanes. Uh, there's some slightly different rules than 10 pin bowling. Um, you get three throws instead of just the two. We leave the wood on the lanes to make our spares and our tens. There's two half Worcesters up there. That's where you just pluck out the 3 9 or 2 8. And um, oh, what a shot! Nice spare. And um, there's no oil on the lanes. Those are the biggest differences in uh, how do you pronounce river walk? I mean, it's the river, if, you, if you're going to do that river walk. I definitely 100% prefer candle pin over 10 pin. It is so much more fun to do. Yeah, it's river. But we pronounce it river, so. No, it is not, ex it is not expensive at all to maintain that pin setter. Um, the candle pin pin setters are actually extremely simple. So a lot of the times it is just small pieces that'll break. They have to be fixed. Nice, I'll definitely be there Tuesday. I'm not sure about the rest of the week, Patty. What makes it more fun? It's much more faster paced. Um, every spare is different. Like you look at Chris Kaz on the left. Uh, that's a makeable shot, not easy made, but it's makeable. And uh, the wood on the lanes just makes it that much easier. And there is always a goal to attain. A 300 has never happened before. So, even pro bowlers have that one thing to attain next. You're always trying to get better at this game. I agree, you do need these down south. Uh, it's not that I don't cover women's matches, but there's just less professional women out there. Um, but yeah, uh, Sarah Wright's gonna be on my team on Tuesday. Uh, my Sunday league has my wife and Sarah McVicker on it. Uh, usually the King of the River here on uh, Nice Spare. Um, the King of the River has a few women that show up. You wanna see the ball return? So, that's the ball, oh, Pete's in the way. There you go, that's the ball return. Now I gotta get the angle back. <laughs> so we can see the pins. There we go. This is not duck pin bowling. Nope. This is called candle pin bowling and it is the best kind of bowling there is. You all against Stasha's or Nikki? Nice. No, I never had the chance to meet her. Speed is key in this game, yes. 
Unfortunately, Chad, if you don't live in the northern New England or Atlantic Canada area, most likely there is no candle in place next to you. Highest score you can get is 300. Just like in 10 you throw 12 strikes, it is a 300. It has never happened in the history of the game, though. Uh, no such thing as too much speed. I bet she did. <laughs> Stasha was a fantastic bowler. Sean Landry. Highest game. No, highest game is a 245 ever. So. so the home team is on the left in the salmon. That is Lafayette. And Academy 3 is coming here tonight. I have never tried to use a slingshot now. Mike Morrill? No, I know Jake Morrill, and I know Mike Morrin, but not Mike Morrill. I do bowl. I bowl all the time, but this is the pro bowlers, and I am not quite that good. <laughs> Pete, this is where it all turns around, right here, kid. Calling it now, your next ball is a strike. Yeah, a lot of places are closing down. Oh, a lot of bowling alleys in general. Cross. Will, you have to roll the ball still, Red Racer. You see that second line out there? Right there? That is the uh, lob line. Your balls make contact with the lane prior to that, or else it is a foul ball, same as it went in the gutter. Hi there, this is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Does he know who you are? Like Fatty, if I just say Fatty said this, will he know who you are? This is Massachusetts, yep. This is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Nice, I bowl uh, Sundays and Tuesdays at Academy, so. Hey, Scott. Do you know Fatty? Yeah. Okay. He says the bowl better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I will, Fatty. Thank you. <laughs> Corey. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. You know, like, if someone has their real name on there, I generally assume people would know, but... Uh, so... It's an honesty thing. Like if it was like the world's turn or something like that, sometimes they have people uh, watching the line. But generally, it is a uh, honesty thing. You call it on yourself. Yep, Academy Lanes is in Haverhill. Bradford isn't a real town. It's just a section of Haverhill. Uh, I did it earlier. Uh, let me grab another ball for you, Scott. I'll wait till there's a break in the action to show you the ball. But Matt Lawless throwing a good ball there. Oh my God, a lot of Scott's friends are watching. Tony B says, "Let's go." I don't know who he is, but you do. <laughs> they love you. Good. Uh, you would. Wait, wait to get that highlight real quick. That's what I. That's all I want. You know. <laughs> you can make like a really good shot, like you know. Just hit the head pin. That would be great. I would like that. <laughs> all right. Here's the. Here's the ball, guys. You want to see it. this is the lane ball, so you can tell it's got a lot of divots. But that's it. That's what the ball looks like in your hand. Uh, what's the difference between this and duck pin bowling? Uh, so duck pin bowling balls are a little bit bigger. Their pins are a lot shorter and look more like 10 pins. Ours look a little more like candles. 21st birthday? I am not saying that name though. Wow. I, I always read the names ahead of time because, and especially with an eight first name like that, you, come on now. I'm better than that. Yeah, 
yeah, most people will attend this. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> this is not five pin bowling. Five pin bowling has five pins. This one has ten. <laughs> Why do you get three shots? Because this is a very, very hard game. Yeah, everyone's blocking back here, huh? <laughs> uh, Yes, he definitely has one of the more interesting throws out there, Ryan. For sure. Nope, you actually get to use your spares, your fallen pins to make your spares and your tones. Scoring is almost the same as 10 pin. First ball still being a strike, second ball still being a spare. Your third throw is just total pin ball, and that's it. So if you get them all down, you uh, on your third ball, it's just a 10, and that's it. You keep saying painted stuff, but there's no paint on a ball. You could probably do that and then have it off to the side, but you couldn't use it. You get them all down, it's a strike. Same as in 10 pin. You get two balls out of your next frame to uh, to make your, uh, to add your score. Yeah, you could definitely do it, but you just can't use them on the lanes. Mostly because they would chip really easily. Stinker. This is called candle pin bowling, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. Yeah, vodka. If you're not from this area, you you know you don't see this anymore. Three hundreds have never happened in candle pin, Jason. Two forty five is the most that anyone has ever gotten. This is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. A pro average is generally somewhere between one fifteen and one twenty. Where am I? Riverwalk Lanes, Amesbury, Massachusetts. Uh, I actually think there's more skill involved in Candlepin. Uh, you got to be so much more accurate in Candlepin. Why do they throw them so fast? Because their balls don't weigh 16 pounds. Uh, so the kinetic energy you want has to come from the speed of your ball instead of the weight of the ball. It is a lot of fun. You bowl a 246, Andrew? Oh, man. I wish I was there recording it. <laughs> I wish I was there to record it. Like I, I said for the stream, too. Yep. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> What what's the name? What's her name on there? I... Hmm. I don't know. It looks like she was blocked or something. Yeah, it looks like it. I don't know why. I don't know why she would be blocked though. No idea. Oh well. I don't know. Huh. Send, we're friends on there, right? Send me a message with her like name right. or whatever, and I'll look into it and try to. Uh... I'm sorry, uh, I don't understand what happened. Yeah, it looks like it looks like either she's blocked me or I've blocked her, and I don't know why that would be. And it, I can always unblock if right, I did right. it for some reason. Right. Maybe she said something uh, and one of my admins, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Yeah, just let me know. Yeah, of course. Sorry. No, 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 no worries. Sorry about that. Trying to figure out why uh, one of the bowlers, <laughs> girlfriend, wife, put, <laughs> uh, couldn't see the game. <clears throat> How often do you see a turkey? Three strikes? Not very often at all. Mark Weber, what's happening, buddy? Am I going to be seeing you next week? I assume so. 
<laughs> I mean, my strategy is always to hit the head pin, but I'm just not that good. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I'll be up there at least on Tuesday. Uh, I don't know. What is going, tomorrow's just the regular kids league, right, TJ? Yeah, it's going for the vintage feel, Lydia. Like it is a very old school place. Uh, there's eight lanes here, River Rock lanes. You don't have to, but it helps to have a, have a good fast arm. I mean, I know a few Pelletiers, so if he has that same last name. What is the name of the game? This is called Candlefin Bowling, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. If you're new here and this is the kind of thing you like, make sure you give me a follow. What am I? This? Yes, that I can do. That I can do. It is absolutely the best kind of bowling there is. Did I ever bowl with Larry Smith? I do not know Larry Smith, so no. I don't even know anybody named with that name. Not too many Larrys do I know. It is harder than 10 good bowling. Uh, I'm not that kind of magic man. Uh, believe it or not, the nickname comes from uh, how much I love Magic the Gathering, the card game. Oh, there are so many different types of bowling out there. There's nine pin, five pin, candle pin, duck pin, ten pin, hegglers or something like that. Ryan Pelletier. The name doesn't really ring a bell, but that doesn't mean I don't know him. I haven't seen him before. Do you know Ryan Pelletier? Uh, how does scoring work? Scoring is almost the exact same as 10 pin. First ball is still a strike, second ball is still a spare. Third ball is just total pin ball, and that's it. In the building right now, there is one. There is one woman in the building, the lady who owns the place. But this is the uh, uh, the men, the Friday night men's league. So you know you're going to see more of the guys, obviously, that are here. Once in a while, their wives or girlfriends will come down and watch. But uh, ten pin bowling is only two, yeah. But you also use a 16 pound ball that takes up half the size of the lane. So since we use a smaller ball, we actually need. One. CJ said to say hi to you. CJ said to say hi to you. Yep, he says hello back, CJ. So it wasn't a strike like I called, but you're due. I'll pick up my ball for this night. Yep. Occupied on. Not to mention Haji pulled the ACSTs against me. Five strikes in one hour. That is true. That was ready. a couple days ago, though. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> we don't need any Charlie Collins situation happening. No, all right. <laughs> like every year, something happens to where they must always let me live it down. Never. <laughs> I know. Just keep the microphone away from you. Keep it away from Ryan Southall. You know, this is what we do. <laughs> I don't know about that. You're good at the game. I don't know if you're a good person, but I assume so. <laughs> I don't know about that. You're good at the game. I don't know if you're a good person, but I assume so. <laughs> this is not duck pin bowling. No, this is called candle pin bowling. Sorry, talking with Petey Pete there. No. 
So let us something for uh, hot chunk. So. Cooling off to the right. Yeah, Haverhill is where I normally build. Uh, you're thinking probably of either uh, Academy Lanes or Pilgrim Lanes. Pilgrim Lanes is closed now, unfortunately. Pilgrim Lanes is now a parking lot, unfortunately. It's so sad. Wow, what a shot from JT. Pulling on the head pin. Great first ball. Uh, no, Ryan. Generally, a faster ball is going to help you more. Slowing down your ball does not uh, make it you any more accurate. Especially when you get to this point. You know, these guys bowl, you know, three or four times a week. They bowl... Uh, big events. So having more speed in your ball actually really helps you here. You don't have to throw it hard, but bowling, throwing it hard helps, that's all. Uh, this is not Canadian bowling, but uh, they do have this in Canada. This is River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. We are in the good old USA, Massachusetts. Scott LaPierre, great first ball. This is called Candlepin Bowling, Keith, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. Well, you can't overhand the ball. You're supposed to go underhand, same as all the other ones. If you see, hold on, wait till he throws that line right there. That is called the lob line. Your ball has to make contact with the lane prior to that, or else the foul ball, same as if it went in the ball. So you can only throw the ball up to 10 feet out. Now, if it hits the lane and bounces, um, that is okay. That is called a... You're, you're, you're allowed to do that. It's generally not, you know, it's gen generally ground the ball. So you can Well, CJ, you're not supposed to be doing that. This is definitely Massachusetts. River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. So many people want me to do I'll call out your brother, but I'm not going to say his name if that's what it actually is. Now, nobody is really great at this game. Like, even the people who are good at this game. Sean. Yep. Um, but yeah, everyone's bad at this game. It's a really hard, hard sport. <laughs> All right. Gonna throw a strike right here. Call him. Oh, so close. I mean, oh my lord. Look at that. That is the one, two, nine. That is gross. Oh. And it's good that you can go back and look at that and then kind of like see. Uh, there's a lot of good fun here from, from here. I uh, uh, bowled with a guy, Phil Flinger. Might be a, might be a relation of some kind. He was an Amesbury guy. Long 
since passed by now, but he was an older guy and uh, bowled with him for years in Amesbury. <laughs> Ouch. Great ball there from Sean Landry. Nice spare. Wow. with some choice words for that pin that doesn't want to fall down. I cannot repeat those words, but he had some for him. What do we got for a score right now? I don't know. We have 447 and 434. 13-pin lead right now for Academy. With uh, two frames to go for each bowler. <laughs> and then next weekend you have the uh, the Kids Worlds, right? November 9th is when that starts. Uh, most men throw it on average about 35 miles an hour, with some bowlers throwing it upwards of 50 miles an hour. Great ball from John Lascarbo. Incredible shot there from Mike Cardone. Very tough shot that he just made right there. Well, you got to hit that exactly perfectly to make that shot. Yeah, good luck. You got some uh, tough talent up there, so. Good to see you again. I am doing very well. Uh, Worlds is coming up next week, and I'm very excited about that happening. Play the wood! That is a very solid team right there. Just tell Cody to keep it on the lanes. You know, remind him what the lob line is. <laughs> well, this isn't Canadian bowling. This is American bowling. We are here at River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. No, you don't have cantaloupe and bowling in the south if that's where you are. Lawless all over the head pin, but leaving a big split. It is a very regional sport, yeah. Pretty much only found in northern New England and Atlantic Canada. It never really took off anywhere outside of this area for some reason. I wish you had this in Texas too, but unfortunately there is nothing in Texas. No, uh, this is just Candlepin, that's it. Uh, most places in this area are just uh, one kind of uh, bowling or the other. And most places are just Candlepin also. Uh, there is a place here in Amesbury. That should be a higher one. That was a great yeah. shot. Yeah. No, 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 I meant, I, meant oh. I was both getting off the lane. Thinking oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to show. Yeah, no. So, let's get the one, seven, eight, ten. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that was yeah, a good one. That's bad. As soon as I saw it cutting in, I'm like, oh shit, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Yep. There is a duck pin place in Dover. Yep. Wow, that is vicious meatball. Vicious. Oh, <laughs> ah, 
Yeah, 150 in Kendall is a huge score. Sure, here's the ball. Right there, I have it. You're the third, like 10th person to ask, so I had it ready. Look at that. That is what a Candlepin ball looks like. Yes, they alternate the lanes every uh, two frames. So each uh, member of the team will bowl two frames on one side, and then they switch to the other side. Well, it's candle, candle pin bowling, not candle stick. Candle pin bowling. Yes, we are in Massachusetts. This is River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Uh, there is only one in New York State. Uh, if you want to go up to Albany, there's one at Apex Gaming up there. Nice shot from JT. Uh, the balls can weigh anywhere from 2 pounds 4 ounces to 2 pounds 7 ounces. But for the most part, these guys will have either two sixes or two sevens. Oh, strike from JT. There it is. Uh, generally, the two fours and two fives are for like the glow bowling balls and stuff that are just made of a different material. Uh, generally, the two fours and two fives are for like the glow bowling balls and stuff that are just made of a different material. You'll see, I was just like, they get worn down. They get great spare. They get uh, chips and stuff, so it reduces the weight. So. You do get three throws instead of just two, yep. The third ball is just total pinfall and nothing else. This is called candle pin bowling and it is the best kind of bowling there is. Ten frames in a game, yes. Well, get them refinished. Bring them here to Riverwalk and have Mark Ritchie uh, redo them for you. Getting them refinished is a lot cheaper than getting a whole new set. Perfect game has never happened, Scott. 300 would be a perfect game, uh, but the most that has ever happened in the history of the game is a 245. I think it's like $45 for a set. Really, really cheap seat here. Yes, this is a very, very hard challenge, this game. It's a lot like 10 pin bowling and golf had a baby. And uh, so it's very, very frustrating, just like golf, uh, but it's so enjoyable. Yeah, duck pin is fun too, but candle pin is still better. Scoring is almost the exact same as 10 pin bowling. Uh, That's what you mean by regular, I assume it was 10 pin bowling. And uh, the only difference is that third throw, which is just total pin ball. 245 is the highest. Yes, duck pin is definitely different. Yes. Strike. There it is. Exactly. Duck pin looks like small ten pins. And these ones look more like candles. Scott Lapierre. Trying to match him strike for strike, but not quite. Scott waiting for the pins to stop moving before you. Um, I think they're hollow. Because I know there's caps on them. So, yeah, they've got to be hollow. Yeah. They're still solid. Is it solid all the way through, Gil? I know there's caps on each other, so I assumed it was hollow, but... <laughs> I mean, if you look at my video from April, you can see me throw a 300 at Cactus. First of April, I happen to throw one. I like it. I like it. Where is this? This is Academy Lane, or uh, River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. 
Shane, I appreciate the questions. Uh, I want to make sure everyone who watches this knows what's going on. And uh, honestly, you guys asking questions and keeping talking, A, helps the algorithm, and B, gives me something to talk about. Ouch, half Worcester to the right, quarter Worcester to the left. So I really appreciate when you guys ask questions and you guys talk to me. This is River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Yeah, mini bowling is very different than Candleton. I think you guys, the mini bowling still uses a Candleton ball, uh, but it, the lanes are shorter and everything's different about it. This is not mini bowling. This is Candleton bowling. I love it, Shane. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. I want people to talk about this. Very New England sport. Yep. Alright, go get it. Uh, try I don't remember. I'm sleeping with despair. It's hard for me to see the score too. What's the difference between what, Crazy Cray? Yes, exactly. I have answered the same questions dozens of times. It is very difficult to throw a strike here. Yep. Candlepin bowling is definitely more of a spare game or even a 10 game than anything else. Oh, well, I don't know a lot about mini bowling because we don't have it around here. But I've been told mini bowling is a 30-foot lane. <coughs> and uh, that's about all I know about mini bowling. So I'm sorry. I just know that mini bowling is definitely different than Candlepin. Uh, trash talking and rooting themselves, like rooting their teammates on. There might have been a few adult beverages consumed tonight. I, I, not for me, obviously, but in, this is a bowling alley that does happen. So if you get them all down your third shot, it is not a spare. It is just a ten. It is just total pinfall, and that's all. Yeah. Yeah, that's, they're just excited. They're rooting for each other. I mean, I feel like them yelling and them getting all excited. You know, it's better than them just being quiet and monotone. Lee, good to see you, buddy. Every bowler here tonight? Yes, CJ, that is true. Uh, Max is doing great. He, uh, he still bowls with me on Tuesday night, so if you ever uh, stop in there, Cactus, you can still see him. Um, he's doing great. He's bowling really, really well recently. There's a quarter Worcester right there. Um, he's averaging, I think, a 113 right now on Sunday nights. So he's doing well. Uh, he takes the quarter Worcester and makes it a half Worcester. It, wow, three single pins. That's an impressive yeah, shot right there. That is... <laughs> <laughs> not saying that's going to be a video, but that definitely could be a video right there. I mean, honestly, that's, impo that's, that's tough to do. That is tough to do right there. <laughs> just the two pin, just the three pin. Yeah, it is the three-quarter Worcester. Yes. <laughs> That's what I like to hear, Cactus. Thank you very much for the kind words. It is definitely not green screen. I think it's just the lighting in this place. Uh, so the ball can weigh from two pounds, four ounces to two pounds, seven ounces. Uh, but most people who have their own balls, they'll weigh between two six and two seven. The lighter ones are for uh, mostly the glow bowling balls that are made of a different material. 
And uh, you know, basically, if like chips and divots get taken out of your ball, they're going to weigh a little bit less. <laughs> nice Salona with a great first ball. Drop. Not as much as in 10 bit. Lefties have a huge advantage in 10 bit because of the oil. Uh, they might have a slight advantage here because there's just less wear and tear on the lanes on the left hand side. But I don't think it's that big of a difference. Like I know 10 minutes, a huge advantage to be a lefty. Yeah, so River Ride, this is called Candleton Bowling. It is the best kind of bowling there is. And if you've never seen it, that's probably because you've never bowled in Northern New England. It's pretty, very, very regional form of bowling, pretty much found only here in Northern New England and Atlantic Canada. So, outside of this area, in the entire United States, there's only two bowling alleys. One in Ohio and one in New York State. These guys are pretty good, yeah, this is why it is the Pro League. Um, is, it is possible to curve the ball, but it is less effective than throwing a hard straight ball. Barney, I'm sorry, this isn't your thing, buddy. I wish it were. Where in Ohio? It is at the Wyoming Civic Center outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. No, there is no Candleton Bowling in Rhode Island, CJ. No, there's no Candleton Bowling there. You've never done it there. You might have done duck pin bowling there. Yes. Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont. Are there. Uh, states you'll see mostly Candleton Bowling. The lanes are 90 years old, so if they have some wear and tear on them, that is to be expected. No, uh, this is now game, the beginning of game three right now, Mark. What is this game? This is called Campbell Pin Bowling, and it is the best kind of bowling there is. It is not 10 pin bowling, that is very true. No, it is, as far as I know, they, they're in, nothing in Cleveland. Who won string two? Um, Scorekeepers, can I see the last scores for game two, or is that not possible? Okay. Uh, could be miniature in Cleveland, yes. So here we go, game two, 616. And, uh, uh, sorry, that is terrible, I know. Here you guys go, thank you. That didn't show much, I'm sure, I'm sorry. Uh, so does Canada have 10 pin bowling or just candle pin? Canada actually has a lot of five pin bowling. Uh, 10 pin bowling and candle pin. Those are the three big ones up there. It is bowling on extreme difficulty. Yes, it definitely is. No electronic scoring. It is still pencil and paper. Uh, so today, this is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. <laughs> I couldn't even read it, Cactus. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a very old house. It's from the 1930s. Uh, it's one of the older bowling alleys out there. Pete! 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 Uh, scoring, well, this is American bowling. Uh, 300 is the perfect game. Yes. 
Um, if you throw 12 strikes, it is still 300, just like in 10 pin bowling, which is what I assume you mean by regular 10, by regular bowling. Uh, you do get three throws. First ball is still a strike. Second ball is still a spare. Third ball is just total pin ball. This is not duck pin bowling. This is not a Baltimore thing. This is called candle pin bowling. Uh, duck pin pins look more like 10 pins, but shorter. Ours are taller and look like candles. Pretty much only find this in Northern New England and Atlantic Canada. Sean Landry getting a 10 there. Nardone is bowling, yes. Yes, he is. Nardone is bowling, yes. Yes, he is. He started with a double strike in his last one that I saw. He threw a three-quarter Worcester. Ten to fifteen Christmas channels already. Might be a little earlier. Might be a little early for that. River Rat. This is called Candle Pin Bowling. C A N D L E P I N. Candle Pin. <laughs> If anybody wants to type it out for them, they can. But... Thank you guys for the shares. We're up to 90 shares so far. Incredible. If you guys don't follow me yet, make sure you give me a follow. I'm trying to get to 20,000 followers before my birthday in two weeks. There it is, Gail. Thank you so much. And uh, Lee, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so I'm trying to get to 20,000 followers before my birthday. We got like two to 300 to go, so I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a good way to score more, and it's also uh, <laughs> um, it's like it just makes shots different. You know what I mean? Like, not every uh, spare is just hit the pin. It, uh, you know, it's all different every single time. Used to be in two leagues back in New Hampshire. Yep. Yeah, I do two leagues a week right now. I do a Sunday league that's much more casual and a very competitive Tuesday league. Oh, there's a nice shot from John Lascarbo. It, it, I mean, this is not Canadian. This is uh, River Rock Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. I don't know what you're talking about, Takis. Yeah, it takes a lot more accuracy and a lot more skill in that way. I think my wife is going to be there this week, and Jimmy should be there too. So right now, I don't think we're going to need you, CJ. But we will be using you at some point again if you if you're up for it. Uh, I used to love Saturday morning uh, candle pin bowling. Watched it all the time with uh, my grandmother. Nice. Yep. I've been to the Freiburg Bain Alleys. We were up there vacationing up in northern, in like the Osby region and went to go find all the different bowling alleys we could find up there. <laughs> Jill, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yep, this is, oh, that nice strike from Salona. Um, this is still the Boston area. You know, we're about 35 miles outside of Boston here. But yeah. Yeah, I'm really hoping, you know, hit that 20,000 before then. I'll be really excited for it. 
that last Tuesday right beforehand, there's going to be a big push to try to hit that 20,000. And I think, honestly, the world's happening is going to be a big help, too. Covering that for a couple days. Yeah. Um, it's not quite my birthday yet. We've got a couple more weeks still, but it's coming up fast. But like I said, I think uh, covering the world is really going to help push that up. Salona trying for the double strike. Left with a big split there. Freddie, this is Riverwalk Plains in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Amesbury is the best town in all of Massachusetts. Oh, what a spare. Town I grew up in right here. Oh, Salona with a nice spare on his strike. All over it. Let's go. Made the big split. The wood there was a big help. <laughs> yeah, really nice pick up there. Yep. Uh, both guys. Both guys did, honestly. <laughs> Truly, Melly. Absolutely. I totally agree. Oh, a spare from JT also. Yeah, sometimes the wood can really be a hindrance, but other times it's a big help like it was there. Now pulling off to the left big time. Now. JT working on a spare right now. So his first ball will count towards that last uh, frame. Just like in 10 minutes. Solid uh, refill. <laughs> no finger holes in the ball. Nope. Uh, you just you just basically palm the ball. Yes, it's a mechanical arm. Yes. So it comes down to sweep, and it sweeps all the pins into the back. If you follow um, Autumn Mowry, she is a uh, Kenlip and Bowling Alley owner up in Maine somewhere. I don't remember her, where she uh, owns, but uh, she does a lot of the background stuff. And, uh, if you want to see how machines work, it's a great follow. I haven't seen her posting much, but she did recently have a baby in Ellsworth. Yep, that's where it is. Yep. Uh, she is either having a baby soon or just had a baby recently, so she's been kind of busy with that, I'm assuming. Autumn Maori. Autumn like the uh, season, and Maori like M-O-W-E-R-Y. She's a great follow. Like I said, she shows a lot of the background stuff because she has access to that. I'm just a regular guy, so I don't uh, get to go in the back with the machines very often. Scott LaPierre, the nice spare. <laughs> there hasn't been that since uh, <laughs> automatic pin setters were invented. She just posts different stuff. Like, she doesn't post a lot of uh, people actually bowling. She posts more about the ownership of an alley and what that's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you might know the lanes we're talking about. I think she bought it, like, a few years ago now. I would not want to own a Kendall Finale. I wouldn't want to own a bowling alley. It's it's a lot of work. I see how much time and effort uh, the DeBurros put into uh, Academy Lanes, and they are there, open to close, seven days a week. That is very true. Yeah, there is very little conversation. I agree with that. But if if you want to see different, uh, you know, you know, 
no. Just a different side of the bowling alley. She's a good follow. I like yeah. I wouldn't want to own a bowling alley. There's just so much risk, and you got to put so much of your own time and effort into it. And when something breaks down, you're losing money. Yes, I stream these all the time. So Friday night I record the Pro Bowlers. Uh, Sunday night I record uh, my regular league. Tuesday I record my league. And then anytime I'm doing a different tournament or anything else that happens, I'm, I'm recording every time. So you'll see me at least twice a week usually, sometimes three to five times a week. These are the Pro Bowlers. Yeah, this is the Friday Night Pro League. It is still a local league. So but basically, it's a scratch league. I love it, Mel. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. It is a very, very regional sport. So if you've never come up to northern New England, you might not have ever seen this before. It's Kendall Pin, not Kendall Stick. Uh, <laughs> but a good score. A good score is 100. If you can average 100, you are going to be one of the better bowlers in your league. If you can average a 115 to a 120, you can bowl with these guys. If you can average a 135, you'll be literally the best in the game. I do. I. Cactus, I like to talk. <laughs> a lot of um, people who are bowling generally don't want to talk. Yeah. I I love talking. I love being the center of attention. So. Streaming really has been good for me. I, like, I used to love having a podcast. Yeah, Josh Daly, Danny Harris, Justin Waters. Those are the kind of guys you're talking about with the 135 average. Hey, and they all bowl on the same team. <laughs> I assume there will be no pro league next week. Because of the Worlds. Everyone's going to be busy at the Worlds. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense because they're really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be no pro league next week because everyone will be in Nashua. anymore. Well, this is still bowling, Caden, but it is not 10-pin. And it is significantly more difficult than 10-pin, uh, yeah. Alright, sounds good, Cactus. Have a great day. Good weekend. See you on Sunday. Same CJ. I have it on my phone, I have it on my laptop. Constantly looking at it to see like who's going where, what's going on. Max Salona with a nice shot. Nice spare. Come on. That's how I feel right now, Jill. Just seeing that yawning picture makes me want to yawn. It is very much like golf in the fact that uh, it is a very difficult game and it's very frustrating. <laughs> but also, you just want to keep coming back and doing it because you can always be better. You know? Yes, it, it does take a while to be good. Like, some people come out of the gate and they're just naturally talented. But for the most part, it is a slow grind to try to get better and better. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, there's a lot of celebration. There's a lot of, you know, you hit the head pin, you kind of, you know, celebrate nice and early. <laughs> I hear it all the time from 10 pin bowlers. They don't like it for the most part, but I say they're having fun. You know, let them, let them have fun. Yeah, of course, like, in, in any sport, you're going to want to have your own stuff. Even little leaguers have their own bats and their own gloves. You know, we all have our own separate balls. We all have our own shoes. Um, depending if you need a knee brace or an arm brace, you can do that. You don't need to throw it super hard, far life, but having speed on your ball does help, believe it or not. So a normal 10-pin uh, pin weighs 3 pounds, 6 ounces, I believe. And a candle pin weighs 2 pounds, 8 ounces. 6 ounces, I believe. And a candle pin weighs 2 pounds, 8 ounces. So it's almost a pound less. Yes, Candleton Bowling is the very popular in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine. It is the most prevalent form of bowling you're going to find. Yeah, so that's, that is my wife and that is Sarah McVicker. They are very good bowlers, yes. There is one in Ohio goods, but in order to bowl there, you have to rent out the entire place. It's much more of a, uh, like a function room than anything else. <laughs> I would like to think off the street. It is my charming personality. That is why. Uh, Harbor Lanes, yeah, they just redid it. Harbor Lanes looks really nice right now. Yeah, if you're from Montana, you'll never have seen this. It's a very, very regional form of bowling, so it's pretty much only found here in northern New England and Atlanta, Canada. What a shot from Scott LaPierre. Way to kick it over. Well, you can't throw it like a baseball. First of all, you have to throw it under him. Second of all, let's see if I can, that line right there, that's called the lob line, and your ball has to make contact with the lane prior to that, or else the foul ball, and the same as if it went to the cover. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, they just recently redid it, and uh, uh, my buddy Jeff Little uh, is there all the time. That's his home bowling alley, and it looks really, really nice. <laughs> oh, just the head pin there for Scott Lockwood. I, I haven't, I've never bowled there before, but. Ooh, Chris Kaz missing way to the left there. It bounced. So every time he throws it, it bounces and then it can go past the line. But it has to make contact with the lane prior to that. Lex one with the heart me. Thank you, thank you. Love Black Swan. If you guys like 10 pin bowlers, you should definitely give her a follow. She talks almost as much as me. <laughs> and uh, she's got an awesome personality, too. She's one of the few bowlers that I really like to go watch. So give her a follow if you can. Oh, absolutely. You're up there bowling. So I watched uh, for a little bit, I watched you bowl. Made a nice fair on that seventh pin. And then I had, and then I had to head out. Yeah, she starts her live a little bit earlier than I start mine. So when I'm out in my car waiting to come in here, I watch her for a little bit. Yeah, PDP off to the right. Uh, she is the black swan.
See, 10 pin bowlers love to say to slow your throw, but you generally want to throw a faster ball. It does help. So many people have never heard of it, Dave. So many people have never heard of it. It was really crazy earlier, Lee, before you got here. There were so many trolls in here. There were so many, like, rough people. <laughs> Uh, so this is called candle pin bowling. It is the best kind of bowling. Uh, any questions you have, you love Jesus, you let me know. Uh, you get three throws instead of just the two. No oil on the lanes. Yeah, most of the time my uh, channel is filled with good people though. And then we try to get rid of the trolls as soon as we can. <clears throat> Uh, what is my average? About a 104, uh, which is still a good average. Better than your average bowler, but also not quite on the level of these guys. So generally, if you take your 10-pin score and cut it in half, that is about what you would be in Kendallpin. So if you were at normally a 140 bowler, you'd be a 70. You're a 200, you probably bowl about 100. Michael, what's happening, buddy? No oil on the lanes. Nope. Just straight wooden lanes. Not duck pin, Gene. This is called candle pin. Yes, yeah, yeah. We definitely get some negative people once in a while. Uh, but my mods are really good at blocking them or muting them. And uh, I don't know, I try to cultivate a good group of people here. I know comments help, even the negative ones, but I just don't want that. <laughs> Alright, well make sure you give me a follow, that way I can tell you more about this next time. It is so much faster paced than 10 pin. There you go. <laughs> the family can watch this. I mean, sometimes the, the bowlers themselves will say some bad things, uh, but for the most part I try to keep it clean. I, don't get me wrong, I enjoy 10 pin bowling also. But candle pin is just, it's just better. It was back in the 70s and 80s and up into the 90s. And then uh, it just stopped being televised. It, it's kind of sad, honestly. So now you guys are stuck. You're stuck with me. <laughs> me and Paul Grant. <laughs> Paul Grant does a great job though too. He's uh, part of Candlepin Bowling Network, and uh, they do a great job. Their uh, their production value is definitely better. It's not a bad. No, it's a great thing that you guys get me. Thank you, Dami. Very, very regional thing, yeah. Pretty much only found in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine, in New England, and uh, Atlantic Canada. Good old Don Gillis, yep. Outside of this area, there's only two in the rest of the country. There's one outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, and one in Albany, New York. So the building is actually a really, really big building, but there's only eight lanes here. Uh, there's also a, a social club behind me, and then there's a hard box gym below me. He has a very interesting throw. That is very true, Sitaro. Everybody has a unique way to throw. This is definitely very unique. Oh, go Ryan and Ham, sure, yep. I do like Rye. 
they got a uh, oh strike right there. That nice ice cream place. Yeah, duck pin is like uh, the pins look more like ten pins, but much shorter. And uh, it's similar though in ways to uh, candle pin number. It, it depends. It's a little easier once they start rocking, but they're harder to hit because they're so much skinnier. So they have their ups and downs. Uh, there's still 10 pins there. Same configuration as 10 pin. But it is definitely, they don't fall down as easy <laughs> as 10 pin. Mostly because you don't have the giant ball. Thank you guys for the shares. We're up to 104 shares so far in this line. That is a huge number. It is significantly harder than 10 pin bowling. Yeah. So the guys you're watching are really, really good bowlers. And you see them still missing shots because this is just a hard, hard game. Absolutely, Judge. I am here to explain this to you and to get everybody to love Canada Bowling as much as I do. It is more challenging than 10 pins, for sure. Scoring is almost the same as 10 pin bowling. Your first ball is still a strike, 12 strikes, still 300, same as 10 pin. Uh, your second ball is still a spare, you get one ball out of your next frame to uh, add to your score. The third ball is the only difference in scoring, and that is just total pin ball if you get them all down. So if you get them all down your third ball, it's just a 10. Oh, absolutely. I, I love uh, sharing this with you guys. Like I said, make sure you give me a follow. My birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks, and I want to hit 20,000 followers before then. No one has ever rolled a 300. Nope. 245 is the most that's ever happened. It's happened twice. It is not Canadian. It is actually American, believe it or not. Uh, why is it so heavily regionalized? So in order to truly understand that, <laughs> you have to understand New Englanders, and we are very good at gatekeeping random things, and Candlepin Bowling is one of them, that we like to say this is our thing, and we don't like to share. I like to share. I want to get this out there, but a lot of people, especially back in the day, wanted this to be known as a New England thing only. So this is Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts. No, 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 no. There's many, many here in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine. There's a few in Vermont, and then outside of this area, there's only, there's only two other ones. There's one in New York and one in Ohio, but around here, candlepin bowling is the most common form of bowling. Everybody, Colonel is the king of Candlepin in Lynn. Lynn Lynn, the city of Sin. Yeah, it, it, that's mostly the biggest reason is that uh, a lot of gatekeeping was involved and a lot of people like the big scores. And the, the companies who make the machines were pushing 10 pin because the machines break down a lot easier. So you get, uh, you know, Bullmore, you get, uh, I forget who else makes candle pin machines, but um, they make 10 pin machines also. And uh, the 10 pin ones just break down more, so they get to replace more parts more often. Uh, scoring is almost the same as 10 pin. First ball still strikes, second ball still spare, third ball is just totally Average score in this league is usually about 115 to 120. It is, it is three shots per frame, yep. With that third one just being total pinfall only. Not being a spare, just total pinfall in the third row. Yes, the ball is only four inches wide. There are 10 pins up there, same configuration as 10 pin bowling. With the same distance apart. No one's ever bowled a perfect game. Never happened in the history of the game. 
yeah, we've all tried to throw a nice slow ball. Um, it just doesn't have the same impact when it gets down there. Uh, slightly smaller pins, you get, they're two pounds, eight ounces compared to candle pin, or 10 pins, uh, three pounds, six ounces. They're a little bit taller though, actually. Uh, no oil on the lanes at all. Though. I don't know how many candle pin bowling alleys there are. I'd say probably about a hundred would be my guess. Then you're gonna have to come up here to Massachusetts, give it a try. Yeah, so the reason they're switching back and forth on the lanes is so that one team can't say, hey, lane four is a better lane than lane three. They both do the same number of uh, frames on each. Other. I don't think there's any Kindle pin lanes in uh, Rhode Island. Oh, what about Duckpin? Oh, Duckpin's a fine sport, but it is not Candlepin. I think that's what everybody thinks. I think that's what everybody thinks. And then they try it and they realize just how, how incredibly hard this game really is. Where's the pocket? So generally you just want to hit the head pin off to one side or the other. You don't want to commit it from the side like you do in, uh, in 10 pin. 115 average in candle pin is fantastic. <laughs> so a normal high score is 100. If you can average 100, uh, you're going to be one of the better bowlers in your league. If you can average a 115, you can add bowl with these guys. If you can average a 135, you'd be the best in the game. Uh, so they have to roll it hard because we don't have the, the giant ball that they get in 10 pin. And so the way you get the kinetic energy to hit the pins and make them splash around is with more speed on your ball. Twenty-five average is a great average. Oh, nice shot there for Mike Salona. I didn't know about that. <laughs> I don't know if there is a TikTok championship, but there should be. Okay, check out the whole right side there. Yeah, nice nine pin drop from Matt Lawless. So this is an AI. This is real bowl. Oh, okay. I thought you said AI. I've thought about doing something like that, CTJ. I just uh, I haven't figured out quite how to do it yet. Philip, uh, I don't know what your first part of the question was. I assume it had something to do with uh, uh, the balls. Like, is there differences? But you can't use that word or else TikTok automatically blocks it. It is not sanctioned like 10 pin. Um, there is in it, like a, a, a thing that tracks everything, but it's not the same. Yes. Yeah, a lot of the uh, the guys in the salmon colored shirts uh, do throw very, very hard and fast. Highest score ever recorded was a 245. It's happened twice. Ralph Sem was the first one to do it back in the 80s. And uh, Chris Sargent was the most recent one in 2013. 
Oh, there's PDP skipping down the lanes. There it is. Fred Flintstone running now. <laughs> I mean, you just saw him running down the lanes, so there's obviously no no oil on the lanes. No. You couldn't skip down the lanes like that and uh, have there be any oil on them. It was against this team when that happened. Yep. Kaz walking down the hole. Kaz being totally. <laughs> Doesn't anyone have any respect for the kids? I can't say what he actually says in the video. Come on! I don't know uh, different people's 200s, but I know P uh, PDP has a 200. He threw it last year. JT with a nice spare. I believe Academy is winning by six pins right now, but four pins. You guys are up? Yeah. Yeah, Academy is up by four pins. Make that two pins. Uh, C Mine is on a different team. He is on a pro team, but he is not on either of these two teams. Yes, yeah, I pulled it. I pulled it Flapper one time in Salem. And then the rain was leaking onto the lane so bad that it was not it was not worth it to go there. This place really does have a lot of character. It's been around for 90 years. So uh, it's gained it's gained a bunch over the years. Yeah, Scott LaPierre, single pin to hit. Nails it. Oh, Chris Kaz making his spare too. Close, close game right now. Six pins different right now. LaPierre with a slight lead. LaPierre filling his spare on the head pin. They're still falling for him. Nine pin drop. One more for the strike. Let's go. Chris Kaz off the head pin. Oh, there's so many Candlepin bowling alleys in Massachusetts. There's dozens of Candlepin lanes in Massachusetts. Yeah, uh, let Chris Kaz throw this ball and then I will show you. Ouch. Here's a ball real quick if you want to see what the ball looks like right in the palm of my hand. There is a lot of skill involved in this. Yes. Yeah, Kenwin used to be on TV 38, used to be on Channel 5. Scott LaPierre. Filling his strike, he's going to have two balls to fill it. You would have to be really, really good to come up with this game. It is a very, very difficult game. Nice. There's a spare. So a 10 fill. It, it is significantly harder than 10 pin bowling. Yeah, it can go up to two pounds seven ounces, but no no more than two seven. They're throwing the ball up to about well, the average around thirty five miles an hour. It's not mini bowling. Mini bowling is a completely different thing too. That's like some a game for kids where the lanes are shorter and these are nice long lanes, sixty feet long, same as ten pin. It is much faster paced than Ken, than uh, ten pin. Eighteen pin lead right now for Academy. So no, you don't. Want, you generally don't want to curve the ball. Generally, you want to throw a hard, fast, straight ball. 
Your ball will have a little bit of a curve at the end, just naturally. Um, oh, with so much space in between the pins down there. <laughs> I don't know if he's still watching at this point. <laughs> Of course, the last frame of the game, we're going to have one of the... <laughs> John, just play it. Don't reset it. Just let it roll yourself. Academy is the team in red. Uh, the one in the, the salmon-colored shirts. That is the home team, and that is River Rock Lanes. Or, sorry, Lafayette Lanes. We're in River Rock, but it is the Lafayette team. I'll show you the scores after everything. Oh, oh, strike from PDP. That's going to be the game there. It's going good, Mike. It's going pretty good. So they are a little bit lighter than 10 pin pins. So uh, 10 pin pins weigh 3 pounds, 6 ounces. Candle pins weigh 2 pounds, 8 ounces. I'm told it is salmon color. Double strike for PDP. Now that it doesn't matter, now he can throw strikes. <laughs> Triple strike to finish. Let's go. PDP. Nine pin drop. <laughs> Wait, it's rolling. No, not fast enough. Though. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me, Barry. This is a very, very regional sport, so. Uh, it's almost the same scoring as 10 pin bowling, with the first ball still being a strike, second ball still being a spare, third ball being total pinfall. <sighs> Tony, as always, buddy. Wow. You guys made it nice and easy on me. Uh, this, there's the scores right there for you. That's the whole scoring table and everything. So, that is the um, Academy, and that is the Lafayette. I will tell them that, MJ. See? But anyway, everybody, thank you so much. Um, high average in Candlepin right now is about a 135. This is River Rock Lanes, Amesbury, Massachusetts, but I am ending it right now. So uh, thank you, everybody, for the follows today. Thanks to the new subscribers. You guys are awesome. All the gifts I got earlier today were fantastic. Uh, please give me a follow. If you don't follow me yet, please. Jeff quit as a moderator. What? Okay. You can do that, Jeff. I thought you did a good job, though. But either way. Uh, yeah, so thanks for the new subscribers, the followers, the shares. We had 115 shares. That was awesome. Um, but yeah. Thank you all so much. You guys are the best people on all of TikTok. You really are. And until the next time, I will see you all Sunday night.